Pulmonary edema is defined as presence of excess fluid around capillary bed and in alveoli of lungs. A space around small capillaries in lungs is known as interstitium. Interstitial space may contain thin layers of connective tissues, fibroblasts and macrophages. Excess fluid leakage from capillaries and its collection within interstitial space is known as interstitial edema. At a later stage, this fluid can enter into alveoli of lungs and is known as alveolar edema. They both are very frequently described by a common term, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema causes interruption with gas exchange, leading to respiratory failure. Respiratory failure means when body cannot maintain a satisfactory balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide within arterial blood. The walls of small capillaries in lungs are semi-permeable, means they allow small water molecules and some other small molecules from plasma to pass through. But larger molecules such as proteins cannot pass through these membranes. <coughs> The force that pushes these water molecules outside the tiny blood vessels is known as hydrostatic force or hydrostatic pressure and it is the pressure exerted by plasma against capillary wall. Hydrostatic pressure tries continuously to force water out of capillaries. This force depends upon pulmonary venous pressure. Under normal conditions as water goes out of capillaries, the fluid in interstitial space becomes diluted and concentration of solutes in capillaries increases within plasma and another pressure develops within capillaries which is known as osmotic pressure. Osmosis is defined as flow of water from an area of low concentration of solutes to high concentration of solutes. Osmotic pressure tries to pull water back from interstitial space to capillaries. Two opposite forces along with lymphatic system keep the lungs in perfectly healthy condition and exchange of gases remains optimal. Lymphatic vessels also lie within interstitium and they also drain excess fluid from interstitial space. However, pulmonary edema can occur as a result of increased capillary pressure, i.e. hydrostatic pressure, decreased osmotic pressure within capillaries, increased permeability of capillary membrane, and damage to alveolar capillary membrane which will increase the permeability of course. The stages are first stage radiologically perihilar congestion, interstitial edema and radiologically at this stage curly A and curly B lines appear. Alveolar edema is the third stage and pleural effusion is the last. However, in case of acute heart failure, fluid will quickly fill the alveoli before lymphatics have time to become visible as septal lines on x-rays. There are two types of uh, pulmonary edema, cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic. Cardiogenic causes are always because of increased hydrostatic pressure within capillaries and non cardiogenic causes are because of increased permeability. It is important to remember though that increased hydrostatic pressure will increase the permeability of the capillary wall. Cardiogenic causes include left heart failure as a result of high blood pressure, left sided myocardial infarction i.e. heart attack, cardiomyopathy which means enlarged cardiac muscles that lose elasticity and thus cannot function properly 
and also as a result of mitral valve malfunction. Presence of tumor in left atrium will also cause pulmonary edema. In all these cases, left ventricle cannot push enough blood to aorta and back pressure builds up which eventually increases pressure in pulmonary veins and then in pulmonary capillary bed causing fluid to leak into interstitium and then into alveoli. This fluid finally ends up as pleural effusion if not treated. Non-cardiogenic causes include increased permeability of capillary walls, excessive infusion of IV fluids, acute respiratory distress syndrome in which inflammation of lung tissue occurs as a result of a number of conditions and leads to accumulation of protein rich fluid within alveoli. Remember in healthy lungs proteins cannot pass through alveolar capillary membrane. Also large pleural effusions should not be drained quickly as it will also cause pulmonary edema. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema can result from drug reactions such as reaction to iodine. Overdose of illegal drugs is another cause of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Key diagnostic tools are chest x-ray and arterial blood gases. Arterial blood gases will reveal acid-base balance. Also other tests may be related to underlying causes which have been mentioned earlier will help. Chest x-ray is a very important diagnostic tool in case of pulmonary edema. As described before, fluid first enters into interstitial space which becomes visible as septal lines including curly A and curly B lines. However, septal lines may become difficult to see when edema enters into alveolar space. Radiologic presentation at this stage would be diffuse haziness across both lungs indicating consolidation that can be difficult to differentiate from bronchopneumonia and some other conditions. However, patient's history will guide you to correct diagnosis. In case of pulmonary edema, you may see a so-called bat wing or butterfly signs where APCs and bases remain comparatively aerated and consolidation diverges from hyla to periphery of lungs creating a butterfly like sign or bat wing like sign. This is another chest x-ray showing diffuse consolidation and curly B lines uh, near right claustrophenic angle and pleural effusion on left claustrophenic angle. Another chest x-ray just to show you a healthy normal lung with normal claustrophenic angles and normal cardiac size. This x-ray has been copied from www.redpod.org. Thank you very much.